Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel, and this is the first super nest removal of 2020. This nest was humongous, and it was a multi-season nest, which was probably at least four seasons of yellow jacket building inside this cavity. This client was noticing some yellow jackets inside, and various different rooms of her home, upstairs and downstairs. And upon investigating, I told her that it was probably in the soffit between the rafter space, um, but once I started exploring a little bit, I noticed that behind this siding where this jutting out window was. But this nest is huge, and it was probably about two feet deep and about two and a half feet wide and whatever that is, 20 inches tall. I mean, it was just incredible amount of space in there, and they filled it all up with envelope. So when I first started vacuuming, I thought maybe the nest was just kind of caked right to the front here. I didn't think it went back as far as it did. So when I started vacuuming, I was like, oh my god, this is like for different seasons of building. So I was like, oh, screw this. There's no way my vacuum is going to be able to handle all this envelope. So I started just kind of pulling it out with my fingers to try to see how far back it went. And it just like went back further and further and further. And I was just... I was just astounded. <laughs> so you can see the different colors in the envelope, and that's how I knew that they were different seasons. Um, the the kind of like more tannish color is a separate season than the light gray. The light gray is usually the current season. I don't know why the envelope discolors or whatever. Um, it could also be where the yellow jackets are pulling their material from each season. Um, but this this colony had like several different other colonies in it. So it wasn't just the yellow jacket, German yellow jackets. It was also um, some different Polistes nests were in there and then also mud doppers. But there is a large amount of different comb. So that's how I knew that there was at least three or four seasons of yellow jackets. So to explain how a super nest works is up here in PA we have different seasons. So by the time it gets cold, a yellow jacket colony will start to die down and it's just the end of their cycle so what happens is they release their new males and their new queens which mate and they go off and they winter over underneath of foliage or a bush or in a log and they protect themselves from the elements until next spring when they can re-emerge the queens only not males where they can re-emerge and venture out to find a new place to build a nest but what happens with these cavities that these yellow jackets build in, if they're well protected from the elements, the queens won't leave the nest. So they kind of stay and hunker down inside of the very well protected and insulated envelope. So everybody else dies except for the new queens. So the following season, they just pretty much pick up where they left off. They won't necessarily build in the original comb, but they'll build onto the comb and they'll continue to grow a nest from that point. And that's what happened here. So this nest I'm pulling down, I believe, would be the original nest because this seat felt like it was the oldest, um, the oldest comb that I pulled out. So you can see how large this was. This is about two feet long and about nine inches wide and about ten inches tall. It was a decent sized nest. And then all around that was newer and newer and newer envelope. So as they progressed each season, as new colonies started they just continue to build on in that cavity. And that's why we have this massive amount of envelope in here. And to think about how many work hours went into building this nest, if you look at all this envelope that I'm pulling out, handfuls and handfuls of envelope, which came out to be about a full black trash bag of envelope and nesting material, one wasp goes out and forages for about 25 to 40 minutes to chew on a piece of wood to get enough cellulose to bring it back to literally make a line of envelope that is as wide as a sharpie mark and as long as maybe an inch to two inches. That is it for the envelope that one wasp will get in a single travel or single forage. And you look at all the envelope in here. You know how many millions of wasps that's took to build all of this envelope. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. And what you're seeing here in this video, this is a 20-minute video, but it took me 
oh, at least an hour to just get all the envelope out. Because I'm also trying to make sure I'm not pulling out the new nest because that's where the mecca of current adults are going to be. And I don't want to open that up prematurely. I want to make sure that I'm just getting all the old nest out and, ex and then slowly expose, like almost like excavating like I do with my ground nest. Just slowly so that way once I actually do locate where the new current nest is, then I can focus that solely at the very, very end of the removal. Because I really don't want all the swarming to happen constantly. I want it to just kind of happen at one point and then deal with the swarm at one particular point in the removal. I don't want it to just be all swarming the entire time. You can see all back in there in that cavity how many Polistes wasp nests are hanging up inside that cavity further back. So if this would have been left to go, they would have just cont they would have just filled that entire space up with envelope and would and they would eventually start making their way inside with the envelope. And it would start making their way inside, you know, at a different season, into the actual wall spaces. Look at all of that. It was about the size of a cheese pizza, like, it, as far as diameter was concerned. And it was probably about four or five layers thick of cone. So now they really started swarming now that I picked up the, uh, the, the current nest. So I just want to spend a little bit of time just kind of battening down some of the numbers, but it's really just drops in the ocean. I mean, look at how many are flying around me. Um, German yellow jackets, they don't latch on like southern yellow jackets or easterns do. Um, they kind of just dive bomb you, and they act like, I mean, they do swarm, and they they will, I mean, they will attack you, and they are attacking me, but they, they just kind of float around. Like, they don't really, like, man, like, if you go into a southern yellow jacket colony, like, they just, like, come right to you, and they latch on, they do not let go. Uh, until they, you're either dead or you run away and bat them off. But look at the numbers in this thing. Like now that I picked that up, they just started like just flooding out of there. And um, a lot of what you're seeing on the bottom here are new males and queens. Look at that nest. The beautiful reveal. This nest is just so huge. And it was heavy. Like you wouldn't think that a structure of paper and insects would be that heavy, but just chock full with all those bodies, all that larva, it just made for a very, very dense and huge nest. I can't even put words to describe it accurately as to like how incredibly massive this thing was. So depending on how I'm doing the removal, sometimes I'll just hold the comb like this and then I'll just vacuum up the adults as they come back to the colony. Because they will the ones that are swarming will see the comb and sense the queen and still fly back to the comb and then I can vacuum them up from there. But the numbers were just so huge in this swarm that I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna bag the nest and put it and get it out of the cavity and then I'll just focus on the swarm right at the original entranceway. Because they were, even though that whole cavity is open, they were mainly flying to that where the original entranceway was that they were using between the soffit and the part of the siding. bagging this thing up and it I mean it is surprisingly heavy like you, you know again it's made out of paper and it's made, made and filled with insects but it is so heavy just for those, those two elements so I spend some time here and I just start vacuuming up as many of the foragers coming back as I can and I do want to get a lot of this envelope out I mean to get 90% of it out. Um, some of it's like caked to the sides of things. It's, you know, I, I can't get everything, um, but I do try to clean out the cavity the best I can. So you'll see the ones that are crawling down on the bottom. Most of those are males and queens, and so they released a lot of new males and queens already this, this part of the season. Um, so I just want to make sure I get as many of those out because I don't want them to do the same thing they did last year where they just release new males and queens and then you just start building right where they left off. pretty daunting task when you're doing this type of removal because there's so many adults flying back at random different places and going into different little nooks and crannies that when you actually start vacuuming you could be vacuuming one spot where you're getting a lot like right here at the entranceway I could vacuum there 
but then there could be some that are flying in to the middle of the cavity, and I see a cluster of them, so I move the vacuum nozzle over there, but then they all come back to the entranceway again. So it's just like that back and forth constantly. See some good shots of them going into the nozzle. Um, spent a lot of time here just, just holding the nozzle here, and it just looks like they just come in waves. And they kind of do, like, it looks like they just get replaced, like, instantly after they get sucked up. It looks like I'm not even doing anything. But there are a lot going into that vacuum right there. Probably in about 10 minutes, I probably sucked up, like, 250 of them. Like, just, just like that. And I could stand there all day, and I would still be vacuuming and vacuuming and vacuuming. Because there'd be that many foragers. If there's this many here now, there's going to be just as many foragers out there. So they'll come back and they'll realize that they can't get in because of the spray that I put at the entranceway and they just, they'll venture out and they'll die. I do kind of stay here at the client's house and vacuum um, until the numbers really, really decrease and that's when it's a good time that I can, I can button things back up and, and head out. So because my bin couldn't hold all of the envelope and comb, I decided just to put it into this uh, big black trash bag and just rake it up like I'm raking leaves. And this is all previous season nests, so this none of this has any larvae or, or any adults inside of it. So as usual with all my removals, I like to make sure that I button everything back up so it doesn't look like I was ever there. So I put all the soffit back together, all the siding, and then I spray around all of the openings and cracks and corrugation in that soffit and siding, and that way it'll keep any foragers that are coming back from being able to get back in that cavity. And I do spray inside the cavity as well. So as usual, get my nest back from my girls, and this nest was great for the, for the chickens because they were able to get, there was it was just chock full with larvae. Pigeon's a bully, so she's always chasing the other girls around. Even though Ginger's the matriarch, they, the other chickens respect Ginger, and they don't, they, they won't mess with her. But they're afraid of Pigeon because Pigeon chases them around. She, she bites them, and yeah, it kind of gets old after a while. So I, I kind of have to tell Pigeon about herself every now and then, like right here. <laughs> it was a, just a soft comb. It didn't hurt her. People often ask what my chickens' names are because um, since I had gotten some new ones on the turkey, uh, so it's Ginger and Pigeon are the originals, and um, Ginger's the the Rhode Island Red. Pigeon's the one that's still molting. You can kind of tell she looks a little bit odd. Um, she's still filling in her feathers from molting. Uh, the turkey's name is Goosey, but I mainly just call her, call her Turkey and call her by saying gobble, gobble, gobble. And she responds well to that. Seems like she likes that. <laughs> um, the yellow, amberish looking hen, that's Daisy. And then the two, what I call the twins, but they're, I mean, they. I can tell them apart, but the one, uh, the lighter colored one, it doesn't look like she has a lot of contrast in her feathers. That's Giblet. And then the larger one, that kind of, it's her sister, um, is Henny. Did 
turkey. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Come on, turkey. Come get some more. Gobble, gobble. So I get a lot of times in the comments of people telling me that I should just burn the nest, burn the nest, burn it. Well, you guys get a treat because I don't burn nests on this channel, so I don't light active nests on fire. But I'll tell you something right now, when you get as much envelope from doing removals as I do, if I don't just chop them up and throw them out in my yard or mow them over with the lawnmower, I will light them on fire to get rid of all the old nest and envelope and that's what I'm doing here. So you guys get a treat today of actually seeing nests being burned. Maybe not an active nest like you'd like to see. But the people who suggest that I burn nests, what they don't understand is these nests are filled with larvae that are saturated with water. I mean they're like 80% water. So burning a nest is not as entertaining as you might think. If I tried to burn a, an active nest it would just, if it even caught on fire, it would just sit there and smolder. You could pour gasoline on it, you could you could put kerosene on it or whatever um, and help like ignite it, but then you're just burning the fuel. You're not actually burning the nest. So when people suggest that, they're not really anticipating the fact that the nest is not going to burn. You can watch YouTube videos of people burning nests and it's almost laughable how like, like anticlimactic it is because the, the nests just don't burn. So you even see here, like, even though this is super dry old nest um, that I just pulled out of that cavity, it, like, the envelope will burn pretty quick, like paper, but not really, like, the way you'd think it would. Like, you would think it would just, like, light up like a tinderbox. A comb especially. Comb just does not burn very well. Like, it just kind of, like, sits there and smolders. Like, it really doesn't, like, take a flame and, like, take off like you think it would. Like, as if you're burning, like, crumpled up paper. So this is a couple old nests that I had lying around, so I decided just to dump them on there too. And people ask me why I don't keep all my nests. If you had any idea as to how many nests I brought home and kept here at my house, like this nest, I had that from last year, and it's just like I have no reason to keep all of these nests. Like I, my whole house would be filled with nests if I kept all of them, even though you know they may look interesting. But I mean, at some point you just have to get rid of them. So. <laughs> But even that bald-faced hornet nest that I just threw on there, like, you can see the outer layers are starting to burn, but it really just kind of chars over. So that thing had been sitting there probably five minutes, and then I go and poke the outside of it to try to, like, see how much it burned through, and it hardly burned through much at all. Like, there's what, probably ten layers of envelope, and it maybe only burned, like, the outer shell, and just charred. And look at it, like, it's not even, like, it's not even fully engulfed in flames, and that thing is super, super dry. But you have to remember, it's made out of cellulose, it's made out of wood, so it's not like it's, you know, just, like, construction paper, like, that can burn up real quick. Like, look at this, I'm poking this, and it's been sitting there burning for five minutes. You would think that it would just, like, poke straight through and just be, like, just crumble then, but it's, no, it's still super structural. <laughs> Alright everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos, or something like to see me cover in an upcoming video, also drop in the comments, let me know. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so, and if you'd like to, hit the bell notification down below, that way you guys get an update anytime I do post a video. Alright everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you on the next one.